Okay, boy, we've had some rain here overnight. It's filled up the tanks, which is fantastic. But uh, what's happened is, as you can see here, as soon as the the gravel beds here are empty, the siphons, uh, it's just overflowing behind me. Now, it's not a problem. It's not really an issue. It, it's just equalizing itself. So I'm not too worried about it. It does look a little bit funny, but look, I, I can adjust the taps slightly to leave a little bit more water in the grow beds. Um, and I can also send a little bit more water into the fish tanks. But at the end of the day, I had it pretty much how I wanted it. And look, it stopped now as we're speaking. It's actually stopped, so now it's going to start filling the grow beds again. I don't think it's an issue. Um, not something to worry about, really. It just looks a bit funny with all the water on the ground and walking past. You just see so much water, but, but hey, everything else is wet too. Not a problem. One thing I could do if I was worried about it, about the sumps overflowing, is I could actually put a drain. I could put a drain in there underneath the pathway but, and straight into the garden. I might do that, just a little tiny piece of drain pipe. And that way when it does overflow, um, like it is doing, it will get off the pathway here. But I really, I haven't finished the path anyway. I'm going to put some gravel down or maybe some artificial turf just to stop the weeds and and grass growing on the ground here. So don't fancy mowing up the side here. It's a bit tight for the lawnmower to get through. <laughs> Just past those sump tanks there. I don't think my lawnmower will get in there. So in my case, I'm gonna, I'll probably uh, artificial turf it and that way it'll stay green. <laughs> Well, morning. It's been belting down rain here in the tropics for uh, oh, a good three days now. Everything's full. All the tanks are full. Frogs croaking like crazy. Everything is working as it should though. The pond is very full. It just keeps overflowing all the time. But hey, it's better than not having enough water um, in many ways. Electric box, just an update. The electric box is all good as well. My electric survived after um, seeing the background. You know, after we put all that in there, just in a nick of time. Look, I had to replace a wire behind me. You can see I've just just G-rigged it up. It's not not tied up at all. I need to cable tie it on, but um, I changed the electric cords because the cord looked to me like a, uh, a rat may have chewed it. Conduit's the next plan. Electrical conduit, put all the wires in electrical conduit. That's what everyone needs to do. Um, mine survived for a few years like this, but not a good idea. Always better to do it the right way to start with. And frogs, fantastic. Let me just show you the tad tadpoles. So this is one of my little ponds that I just, I've got no fish in here. And as you can see, these tadpoles, they're the white lip green tree frog from tropical North Queensland. So I'm getting a lot of tadpoles. Now that's not gonna hurt anything. It's actually really good for the system. Nothing better than having frogs in your system. And I've got about three different species in mine, um, which is great. Good to see. We're creating habitat, not just food. We're creating habitat. Look, after all that rain, I can see one issue. And that is, if you have a look behind me, the pump, there's a uh, right angle on the pump. And what I do is, um, it's just a T-join. And I always do this on my pumps, put a T-join on, and that way some of the air, some of the air can stay, some of the water can stay in the pond. Well, what's going on here is looks like the T-join is blown off because I never glue it on. And she's blown right off. Which means, without looking, I can tell you that my blue drum up there, the filter, is not going to be working because all the water will be staying in the pond and not going up into that filter. So let's just have a quick look. So as you can see, there's the drama that I can see. So that's just blown off. It's going to be hard to find in there with all those hungry fish. I'll have to feed them first and they'll bite my hand. But it won't be far away. It'll be in there somewhere. But if we 
have a quick look in here, I can guarantee you, yeah, there's no water. Yeah. So I was playing around with that a few days ago, so obviously I didn't put it on tight enough. That's yeah, my fault. I don't like gluing it on because I often tweak these things. But um, I may just have to glue this on because once I put on that um, one-way device, the, the flow is backing up and that's what's blown it off. So I'll just have to change it. I'll glue it on and it'll forever be on then. There it is down there. Just a matter of getting it. I use the net. Don't want to catch any fish, but I'll... There it is. Uh, you can see, that's that's all it is. I don't want to shove my hand in there at this early morning. <laughs> Righto, so that's a T-joiner. That will just sit comfortably like so. Let me... Um, yeah, one-handed, left hand. It won't be very tight, but it's a lot of pressure. There we go, it's all on. That's all I need to do, the T-joiner. Now I haven't glued that. I will, it might blow off again, but it's so wet here. I'll glue it again another day. I haven't glued it on, but that's the issue. Won't take long now for my blue drum to fill up behind me and everything will work well again. Now what's, it's just been raining so much. Now, it's not the rain that caused this issue, it's the fact that I didn't put it on tight enough a few days ago. You know, that's what happens. So let's just see how she goes. It's the fish food, look at that. <laughs> Every day. I really need to um, put it in a different location, I think, but here in Cairns, so much is in the dry. For half the year we're dry and half the year we're wet. So that's beautiful fish food in there. Let me just feed these fellas. All right, so now that's flowing nicely behind me. Uh, there it is. And creating oxygen, more oxygen. And now let's have a look inside of the, of the swirl filter. That's a bit better. Uh, much better, because now you, you cannot see the overflow pipes and it's, it's working as it should. So that's what I like to see. There we go. So now, it overflows into this, this drum and out the side of it and on this side as well. Spin around so you can see there, it's overflowing both sides. And on this system here, straight in there. Great, so it only took me five minutes this morning, just a quick, quick heart attack what's going on but obviously it's just a small little pipe that fell off and once it's glued on no drama so it's just a matter of, your maintenance schedule should only be a couple of minutes a day i mean you just need to check it each little connection just put your eye on it i never even touch it just put my eye on it it's very rare that that happens very rare um, it's just that we've had so much rain well she's still raining here in tropical far north queensland that's for sure and uh, as you can see on the on the hills here. It's um, pouring down with rain, as you can see behind me here, in the tropics, non-stop rain. And uh, what does that mean for aquaponics? Well, look, there's nothing much you can do about it, but um, it does mean that uh, you might lose your nutrient load. You might lose some fish if they're they're not nailed down. Look, if you haven't got a little um, a little overflow outlet a couple of centimetres down from your sump tanks, which will let water out, then you could possibly lose fish that will just overflow, especially the young fingerlings. And uh, if you don't have a lid on your fingerling system as well, you could um, 
could lose fingerlings out of the out of that tank as well. So there's two little tips there. What else do I do? Look, this is, after a big rain event, there's the chance that you will lose a lot of your nutrients. So I add sea salt into my sump tanks and also into the grow beds, just a, a couple of capfuls. And that'll just replace the ammonia. It'll replace a bit of the nutrient load and it will just help your plants to just to be buffered, I guess. Uh, until you fish and in a couple of days time, well, it'll all rebalance itself. It's a natural process. It's living, breathing, biological system and it is pretty versatile. However, uh, you will just have to take note that in the rain, you do lose some components of your system and you could also have uh, insect attack happen as well. A lot of my clients, they, they've contacted me in the last couple of weeks saying, hey, all my plants are starting to die or locust plague or army grub plague has just came in. Well, that's because we've had rain for the last month. And when you do have that amount of volume of rain, your nutrient loss is pretty, pretty great. So my advice, add a few uh, bits of uh, sea salt, a few slurps, depending on the size of your system and it can't do anything other than improve. Look, we've had a lot of rain just recently. I'm out here trying to fix a few things after it's been pouring rain. And I just wanted to share with you my first flush this device here has worked well behind me. As you can see, a bit hard to see there, but first flush device, it goes right to the ground. And my three tanks behind me are filled to the brim overnight. So a huge amount of water just fell and um, oh, it all works beautifully. I'm very impressed. What I'd like to do now, unscrew the cap. You can see I've already <laughs> unscrewed a little bit and I'll just see how much mud and gunk has come off, off the roof. I know this is gonna be full to the brim of mud. Let's have a look. <laughs> all right, there we go. It's not easy. You can see how much sediment filth is coming out of it already. I'm about to get covered in it. Jeez. Shoo-wee. Wow, that worked well. <laughs> so, worked well. First flush device. Loads and loads and loads of sediment. I'll put it back on now. That's the way it goes. it back on as you can see all the mud has actually been from my moringas up above little tiny leaves but they do make a lot of mud and my first little separator is working extremely well hey I really appreciate you watching and I'd like to know what you thought of this video so feel free to write in the chat box below and if you're new to this channel and you'd like to know more then hit that subscribe button and if you wouldn't mind give me a good old thumbs up so i know i'm on the right track and just also let you know too that i do have a private facebook group and i go in there live every week and i answer questions from the chat as well so feel free to join that as well and i'll put it in the in the comment section below